Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel again. It's Demetrius here. In following with my last three uh, videos that I've done on CrowdStrike and the massive global meltdown that we've seen in the industry around the world and all the different industries, all the different sectors, my last two videos were just discussing topics about the problem that's happened and also I went into a little bit of depth with regards to a little bit of the history of CrowdStrike and its political sort of connections and policies globally around the world and so on. In this video, it'll probably be my last video that I'm going to do on CrowdStrike for now. Let's just see what happens. But I'm going to discuss uh, something I've come across recently with regards to a very cool uh, way of dealing with having incident handling and a more robust way of releasing updates and dealing with those updates in companies and handling those processes and uh, there's a very cool technique it's called in toto so i'll put a little presentation once again for you you can always download this presentation for free like i've said to you before i don't ask for contact details or email addresses or anything like that so I'm going to take you into this thing just to show you this recent incident that's happened and involves sort of obviously CrowdStrike Falcon software. And it underscores sort of the critical importance that we have to, to sort of uh, um, figure out a more robust, more secure way of releasing software in the industry and releasing updates. And uh, this little presentation will sort of outline the incident the consequences and the lessons that we should learn from this and then emphasizes more of a comprehensive testing integrity kind of verification process and also um, gives you a little bit of a roundup view a bit of a summary view of the framework called in toto to help sort of prevent similar occurrences in the future so let's take a look at it briefly and uh with this particular type of method, well, what we've learned so far with CrowdStrike, this CrowdStrike incident, for those of you who don't know, this happened really on the 18th of July, which effectively is, it over, it, it went over and spread over the 19th of the July. When, that's when we started to see this happen. That's two days ago and yesterday. And uh, it was a buggy update. You know, a buggy update. Let me just pop my face on here so you can see me. It was a buggy update that essentially the CrowdStrike Falcon security software, which is usually used for real-time threat analytics, incident handling, uh, real-time analysis of evidence and data and logs and sort of dealing with things like <clears throat> malware signatures and that kind of thing. Uh, it caused a widespread crash, system crash, literally across the world, across its entire customer base of over 24,000 customers, looking at 100 sectors plus around the world, which is millions of millions of machines, specifically Windows-based machines. And they, it rendered those systems in a blue screen of death, the BSOD, which we don't like as IT administrators or system professionals or security professionals. And this has led to dis really significant disruptions in, in critical services. Critical services, you know, including government agencies, banks, airlines, payment processes, 9-11, for example, emergency services in the States and in the UK and in Europe and all over the world. All the emergency call centers and television networks and health systems across the globe. So it's a pretty big deal. And the aftermath of this incident uh, has been quite challenging. You know, the aftermath is, is, is pretty challenging because really organizations are scrambling to implement these fixes and they have to put boots on the ground, you know, and, and, and people have to physically manually do these changes. There's no way to do things remotely. So it's simple reboots uh, don't necessarily always work. You know, it's going to complex sort of complex recovery procedures and involving encrypted drives and having to uh, divulge encryption keys and having to expose those things. And it's like, you know, the situation highlights the need for a lot more robust safeguards in software releasing as a process in general, okay? 
we don't want to have these blue screen of deaths you know we, we just don't want to have these because unfortunately it renders the the systems bricked up so we can't do anything with them remotely we have to physically go and update them and they've got a huge amount of systems millions of machines online and on the internet and without uh, internet connectivity so it's it's a big problem and it may take up to three four five weeks to even solve you know i'm being conservative here so the experts around the world have sort of chimed in and that's what i wanted to put together in this presentation and i've i've sort of captured a few of the sightings that i've seen around the, the world from experts that are in this industry and one of the chaps justin capos he's a professor at new york um university and um He's a co-creator of a, of a framework called Intoto, and it's really quite a cool framework. And essentially, it, it strains credibility that any organization, much less a security company, would fail to have robust software supply chain validation mechanisms in place. You know, it, it, it's really an interesting thing. So the fact that the software could be released without testing it correctly actually demonstrates a level of negligence and uh, he himself says i'm shocked to see for a from a major security company something like this happening he says it strains credibility that an organization much less security company would fail to have a robust software supply chain validation mechanism absolutely 100 percent. then um tony tony arcieri cryptography and infrastructure engineer it's a very very famous chap arcieri sort of drew a comparison between the situation the situation and a self-inflicted ransomware attack which effectively is kind of the same thing right now that's happening highlighting the critical importance of proper key management practices which is why this is important is because well okay any any updates that have to take place needs to not just be via an encryption process it also needs to go via multi-factor authentication and it has to be approved by more than one party and it has to go through the necessary stages of approval so there's obviously a failure from counter strike uh, counter strike my apologies from crowd strike with regards to this uh san diego torres uh torres arias i mean sorry and he's the co-creator of intoto also pretty cool and an assistant professor at um purdue university and he, he mentions you know the supply chain integrity is not just about securing the what of the software in other words what the uh uh, falcon software is doing which it's doing a phenomenal job you know falcon as a s software application to protect systems there's no doubt about it it is phenomenal in the way it works you see if it's only doing the what protection basically only by answering how something was made can be really sure can we you ba basically be sure of its integrity right so that is where intoto as a framework actually shines uh, so it enables automated security and compliance checks throughout the entire software supply chain, <clears throat> ensuring not just the end product, but every step of its creation is verifiable and secure. So in other words, it goes through all the multiple stages that it has to go through. So in total, will allow you to go through multiple approval stages throughout the whole supply chain, across all the systems that has to be implemented across and actually get verification along the way, which is what I mentioned in my previous video. We need better verification and transparency across the releasing of software, especially with companies like CrowdStrike, which are very, very heavily embedded in millions of systems around the world. And uh, he further, he goes on and he says, it enables automated security and compliance checks throughout the entire software supply chain, ensuring not just the end product, but every step in the creation is verifiable and secure and that's what i was hopping on about my previous video it's not just secure way of doing it it's verifiable which means you can there's an audit process behind it it's not just checked and approved there's an auditing process behind it because there's after that a final approval and that's quite important and i think that's where the failure is with CrowdStrike. yeah they just didn't follow this process correctly now if you compare it to the self-inflicted ransomware comparison, Tony R. series comparison between CrowdStrike incident and say the self-inflicted ransomware attack underscores, again, a critical importance of not just having robust release processes, 
but also maintaining proper key management practices. And then, of course, here's the thing. Without access to those recovery keys, organizations find themselves at the moment today in a very, very precarious situation because, well, they can't access their own encrypted systems which means they can't get into the systems to fix the systems in place so that they can get them to boot up and get them to be operational. Well, it's the same thing with a ransomware. If you don't have proper key management access and you don't have backups of your keys and everything gets ransomed, basically you will have no way of accessing your data. So it's mimicking this attack, which is a self-inflicted denial of service by CrowdStrike. It's mimicking the effects of ransomware attacks but it's caused by their own security measures, which unfortunately, let alone being violated, they're just not followed correctly, which is a very bad management and over management oversight, exceptionally bad. Now, there is a need, of course, and we know this, and this is a definite problem, and it's not just now. This is not a new problem, okay? We're not going to uh, hop on on on, uh, on CrowdStrike and say, oh, you guys have created this new problem. It's it, This isn't new. I've been in the industry for 37 years in IT and security as well, and I see this all the time, okay? There's improvements every time, but at the end of the day, we still fall back on reliance on certain types of protocols and systems and applications and methods and methodologies, and it's not enough. It's not enough. And there's a need for robust release processes. You know, this incident emphasizes a critical need, critical need for processes that are not just guidelines, but technically enforced safeguards. Okay. As this chap Kapos points out, right, release processes aren't just a checklist of best practices. They're not like RFCs, request for change, request for comment guidelines. They should be enforced technically in a way that makes it implausible to bypass these safeguards. This technical enforcement is key to preventing incidents like the one that we are seeing, and absolutely 100%, the same way that I mentioned in my previous video. If these were in place, there would be absolutely no way that the technology layer, in other words, all the technology staff, would have allowed this to proceed forward. There's just no way. The decision was made by management to proceed with this update, which effectively means the chain itself is not functioning. There's a complete failure. Because somewhere along the line, this would have been detected if you had implemented some form of robust product release updates and processes, which means it didn't go through those, let alone testing. So there's definitely some major failures here. Looking on towards what we need to start thinking about is there's critical components for a release process that needs to be in place. And these are some of the critical components. I've highlighted six, three on this page and three on the next one. First of all, we can see clearly that CrowdStrike inevitably has failed on the comprehensive testing. Thorough testing of updates in environments that closely mimics production systems is very important. You don't just implement updates on live systems just because you assume that these updates are very small and they're insignificant because one weakness in a system is all an attacker needs or all that this kind of situation needs to render systems globally unusable, which is a clear indication right now. The other thing as well as the second part that's needed, the second component is that we need integrity verification. In other words, cryptographic techniques are needed to be verified. In other words, you need cryptographic methods like multi-factor authentication, authentication techniques, passwords, logins, all that, to verify the integrity of every single step in the release process. In other words, it has to be a staged release. You can't just release one bang output and that's it. Ensuring that no unauthorized changes can be made without detection. The problem with this kind of integrity verification is that, unfortunately, the majority of the security software that is used out there in the industry today is not developed correctly, irrespective of how much money is behind, say, something like CrowdStrike. Yes, they're worth 84 billion, right? But it doesn't mean that the software has been developed perfectly from the ground up. There are a lot of beautiful functionalities inside the software, and it does really work very well. However, 
we can see that it's failed in its most important fundamental thing, and that is its, its main activity, and that is to protect the systems it's been implemented on. Not just to protect the attacks trying to hit those systems that the software has been implemented on, if that makes any sense to you. So integrity verification using cryptographic techniques needs to involve, and this is going to go back to some of my courses I've built before, and, and I've got them available on ob.academy on my website. It needs to involve blockchain. You see, the use of blockchain will make this kind of system have an immutable capability. In other words, there is no way to implement an update in such a way that it does this kind of damage because it would require that every single process within that chain would have had to be verified. Otherwise, that particular change is, th is thrown out of the chain and then a brand new process has to kick in. So essentially, there's no way to corrupt the blockchain because it's an immutable ledger, right? So it has to satisfy every single block going back, which means there's cryptographic keys, private keys and public keys going back, which means if you wanted to corrupt this kind of system, even as an attacker, you would have to have every single private key that was used to close those blocks and every single block inside that blockchain so that, so that you can compromise the system, which is not possible because you would have to have the multi-factors, the authentication keys, the cryptographic decryption keys, you name it, for every single process and transaction going back in the blockchain. That is how you solve this problem. But I'm assuming that they don't have this blockchain enabled because if they did, this would have never happened. There is no way for that to happen. There just wouldn't be a way to happen. And the other thing, of course, which is where they've completely failed at, is things like stage rollouts. That's another very critical component of robust releases. And that is, you've got to do things in stages. You can't just go ahead and implement an output that you know very well that that needs to go across the globe. And you can't just implement it in one go across all the systems. That's not a gradual rollout. That's a brute force. And a brute force can lead to breaking up systems, which is what's happened here, because obviously they've failed on number one and they've failed on number two, which effectively means they have now failed on number three naturally, because irrespective of whether the staged rollout is in place or not, they've already failed on one and two. But if they had succeeded in one and two and they failed in staged rollout, well, that means there's parts of the chain that are broken, which effectively the entire chain is weak, so they need to sort themselves out. And a staged rollout would have picked this out because you would have realized, oops, no, we can't release that version because it's definitely breaking these kind of systems. No, we've got to go and release this version. Let's do further testing. And that's called unit testing. OK, that's the idea of a staged rollout. It's a gradual rollout. It's a strategy to detect issues before they affect the wide user base. They've completely failed on this. CrowdStrike. And, and, and the CEO, George Kurtz, come on, it, it, this is a complete failure on your part for this. Now, in step four, or the fourth type of component, there needs to be quick rollback mechanisms. This is very difficult to do in this scenario. You know, the ability to swiftly reverse <clears throat> to a previous stable version when an issue is detected, that's a little bit easier to do when you have a cloud solution because you're controlling that virtual machine and you're within that environment. If you now are looking at a, the scenario of what we've had now, this attack that's happened or this incident that's happened, the problem is there is no rollback mechanism that can be in any way quick or any kind of rollback mechanism that can be remote. Because what has happened is even though they rolled out this, rem this update remotely across the board, it rendered every single one of those systems enable or unable to boot up so it disabled them completely let alone disconnecting them from the network if it was just a simple bug or a fix or an exploit that just disconnected them from a network environment it wouldn't be such a major task to go back and reconnect these systems but the fact that it's rendered them unusable with a blue screen of death means that it's at the hardware layer from the hardware all the way up to the application layer. So it's actually affected what we call the OSR reference model. It's affected the physical data network transport session presentation application layer. All of those layers are completely affected because the systems cannot boot. So there is no quick rollback mechanism here. 
which means that the critical component that really should be allocated here, apart from quick rollback mechanisms being digital, there needs to be adequate IT trained, skilled security staff on hand at all times in your teams to handle this kind of activity. Because, well, what if companies have been doing in the last five years? They've been letting go. They've been firing people left, right and center. We've had hundreds of thousands of thousands of people being let go, very highly trained, hardworking professionals because in the name of making more money and more profit in these companies, and, and that's companies around the world, not just CrowdStrike. And, and the thing is, well, now what are they going to do? Because now they need the boots on the ground to go and deal with this quick rollback, which they can't. So you're now facing a double-edged sword, like I've mentioned in my previous uh, video. You have, you have a, 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 a perfect storm right now, because not only has CrowdStrike created this mess even though they might have got a fix for it, it doesn't matter. They can't roll out the fix themselves because it can't be done remotely. Now, all these other companies, they've been letting go of so many people so many years, and now all of a sudden they have boots on the ground, so they can't fix anything. They need highly trained people. They've got complexity in fixing things because of all the encryption keys to get around Microsoft systems with BitLocker and encrypted data disks. So we've got bigger problems there because now we're exposing security flaws and security parts of the systems. And on top of that, we have the public freaking out because it's really causing mayhem. And it's at the level where it's potentially uh, possible to have loss of life because it's hit mission critical systems. So a quick rollback mechanism is an ideal solution, yes, but it doesn't necessarily always work like in this scenario. It will need to include full-blown IT complement of staff. And I'm talking about rehiring people back into your company instead of outsourcing and just relying on software systems like this, because automation, machine learning, AI has a place. It's great for analyzing. It's great for doing real time threat analytics, but it's not very good at implementation. They just can't. And you need humans to do this. And the fact that now that they've millions of companies have let people go, I can't even begin to tell you how many people have lost their jobs. It's quite demoralizing now for companies because now they're going to realize, wow, we need these people back and people are not going to go back. Or the people that will go back will demand massive salaries or they'll demand massive increases. And rightfully so, they should, because this is not a simple task to fix. And it's an inherent problem in companies because effectively, when companies let people go, they will water down their domain knowledge. They will water down their security levels and they will increase the footprint for hackers to break in, let alone the fact they won't be able to deal with like an insifted uh, uh, and in, and in self-inflicted distributed denial of service like this, which is very closely mimicking something like ransomware. Now, on top of that, we would need also another type of component which will help, and that's pro proper sort of key management when we have to deal with now. This is another thing they're dealing with now around the world is ensuring that encryption keys and recovery keys are properly managed and readily available when needed. Do you know how many thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of companies today don't have access to your key, to those keys that they need so they can decrypt the systems and allow these IT guys to go in, or IT uh, personnel to go in and actually go in and fix this problem? They won't have access to those keys. In fact, some of those systems are corrupted which contain those keys in the first place. So the hassle is there's no offsite backups in any of these companies. So there's a much bigger extended problem here. You're going to find a lot of companies will more than likely close. They will go bankrupt because they will have lost the entire supply chain that they have. And that means that there needs to be far better proper key management as well in the process. So they've got to adhere to all of these six things and of course more procedures. But these things are an absolute failure from CrowdStrike. One, two, three, four, five, and six are a complete failure from CrowdStrike. And number one is a complete failure from uh, CrowdStrike. Number two is a very massive complete failure from CrowdStrike. Number three, very strange that there wasn't going to be a good rollout. 
The quick rollback, very difficult for CrowdStrike to deal with this, and that falls back onto the companies that are implementing the software. They would have to put also more necessary mechanisms like quick resolution systems um, uh, in terms of cloud solutions rather than just having brick and mortar systems. Also things like having more people in the IT complement so that they can put boots on the ground to fix the problem. So this is a double-edged sword. It, it falls on both sides of the world, not just CrowdStrike. It falls on all the companies in, as well at the same time. And then one of the key factors that, that clearly is a problem, and I didn't mention it earlier, I would jump to number six straight away is because I wanted to come back to it last. Transparent communication is critical. What we're not getting from CrowdStrike and we're not getting from a lot of the companies is clear, timely communication with the affected users about the nature of the problems and the step for resolution. We've been given very brief information. Uh, a lot of the systems that they have in place online with CrowdStrike were failing. People couldn't access their site, couldn't access the information. And a lot of the data that was given really was, was way too complicated for some companies to be able to implement because they were lacking in the staff to be able to do this with trained skill staff. So. And also the additional sort of gaslighting by George Kurtz as a CEO was just not very, very useful as communication. In fact, it was rather pathetic. So there was not enough transparency here. And that has led to the, uh, the ultimate perfect storm. The perfect storm in this whole release. So why go with a framework? What's the use of using a framework? Well, the idea of using the Intoto framework is it's a, it's a blueprint for secure, verifiable software updates. And that's what we're missing. And the CNCF, the Security Advisory Group, the Cloud Sort of Security Advisory Group, it's a technical group, um, are actually advocating for this. It's a pretty good group. This is the organization. Okay, If you go to the website um, cncf.io and you go online, you can get to see as an advisory group, a whole lot of documentation, publications, and so on. At the CNCF, the, the Security Advisory Group, they actually advocate for the adoption of frameworks, guidelines, frameworks that can help prevent such incidents. One such framework is actually the one I just mentioned as we began this, and that is in Toto, which is pretty cool. And it provides a comprehensive approach in the supply chain security. In other words, not just from CrowdStrike's perspective, but the entire chain all the way down to the customer systems. So you know, Intoto is an open source framework. We need that kind of system. You cannot go closed source. CrowdStrike is already a closed source system. It's not ideal because it's forcing Microsoft to allow it to implement a, an application that goes all the way down to hardware layer, which effectively, in a way, is violating Microsoft's architecture, which now has caused Microsoft machines to break up because Microsoft has allowed that software to operate at such a low level in the kernel layer and just above hardware layer that the machines are not booting up anymore and they can't be accessed remotely. So this in Toto open source framework is cryptographically developed. So it ensures cryptography is enabled across the board. So you've got digital hashing and encryption and it ensures the integrity of the software supply chain. So it allows for the definition of supply chain layouts and the creation of cryptographically verifiable metadata about every single step that's taken in the process to release a piece of software or an update to a software. And it's verifiable at every single stage using cryptography, which is pretty much what blockchain does. For example, like in cryptocurrency, we do that all the time. Components of an in total layout are, are things like this. It involves the steps. So the steps that should occur in software supply chain. Then it looks at the authorization process, like who's authorized to perform each step through the use of cryptographic keys, which if it was done correctly at CrowdStrike, this would have been picked up. This attack or this incident would have been picked up because one of these verifiable stages along the way would have been would have detected this. And then the cryptographic process wouldn't have been in place, which means there was no way to release that particular update. Then there needs to be the order, an order where at which these steps should happen, you know, and these will be enforced at the verification and procedural level. So they need to be carried out at a very particular stage. In other words, staged rollouts, okay, and then enforced at every level. And then materials and products, well, the input 
it has to be dealt with correctly. Like what are the materials coming in? What are the inputs coming in? And then what are the sort of the products going out? What's the final output update going to do? The output. As well as the thresholds. Like how will this affect the systems? You know, they will determine pretty much all the necessary cryptographic signatures that are need and required in each one of these steps to be considered. And if one of those cryptographic signatures is missing, then ta-da! You don't have that possibility of releasing that update. They would have easily detected this problem. Here's an example, right, of an in-toto layout. I've actually gone online and picked up an in-toto layout. For those of you who are a little bit more technical, and you can see the breakdown, you've got all the different steps. You've got um, a highlighted view, you've got the name. You've got, okay, so let's explain this. You've got like a code review section. You have like an expected products, the output, and then you have the necessary keys in place, the public keys that are gonna be exchanged between, say, CrowdStrike, for example, and say the customer. So there'll be two public keys that be exchanged for this, which means there's a verification process from the client as well, from the customer side as well. It's not just from CrowdStrike. That's very important here. Classic public key cryptography, you know, certificates. And there's also the processes for unit testing and the expected sort of results that we want out of those, what's coming in and what's being pushed out in terms of review and what's being pushed out. Again, with every single one of these stages, there's a verifiable signature being pushed to, to do this. Both the public keys on either side are actually used in this transaction. And then a bit further on, I've got like okay, the thresholds, how each one of those has a little threshold. So each one will have like a particular threshold. Then there's the build, what kind of updates going to be doing? What is expected to happen? What is the final output? What are the keys exchanged? So every single time there's a verifiable process and there is an expected output and there's an expected threshold so that it's constantly audited through the process. And then of course there's inspection, which is, this is why we have authorization and quality assurance, which again is one of those things that has failed with, with CrowdStrike again. Um, final product testing, fully tested across the board, the final outcomes, fully verifiable. You know, the, the, this whole thing is verifiable through every single stage. That to me shows that clearly this was definitely missed by CrowdStrike here, because if these steps were in place, this, this should have never happened. Let alone the fact that business executives, managers, directors, CEO George Kurtz actually allow for something like this to be violated. Something like this should never have been in the procedures. And the fact that people have definitely confirmed and verified and allowed this update to get pushed out to the world means to me that somewhere along the line, if they have a process, if they have a process, okay, and they have gone through this process of actually verifying each stage, they shouldn't have had this problem. So somewhere along the line, they have truly messed up here. Or there wasn't a process in the first place, which, fine, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be problematic for other types of testing when we're testing for malware and all those things, but it definitely is very important for internal and self-inflicted type of scenarios like this, and especially updates, because, well, what's happened right now is basically a self-inflicted distributed denial of service that's masking itself as ransomware. And more importantly, hitting the hardware layer, which is forcing systems not to be able to reboot which means you can't take control over them and fix them easily. So you now need to go physically and fix these systems, which is an absolute disaster, an absolute disaster. So let's talk about a little bit of a conclusion here. And, you know, this recent crowd strike uh, incident sort of serves a powerful reminder, okay, how critical this is and the importance of a secure, robust, release process in software systems that people rely on daily and we need to have more verifiable stages we need to have more transparency more effective rollouts more staged approaches more verified stages all the processes need to be fully pro documented and verified and you know by learning from this event hopefully if we can solve this thing relatively quickly, I, I, I really feel for the IT guys around the world and the IT ladies around the world who are going in and are trying to solve this problem because this is going to be a lot of work. I hope that we can learn from this event and implement the frameworks like in Toto because 
this will help work towards preventative measures. It's far better to be proactive than reactive, because currently right now we've been reactive. And reaction is not ideal because it leads to huge problems. Like currently or at the moment, all these 24,000 customers with all these rendered systems unusable, they are 100% at the moment vulnerable for, for attacks by hackers. In all sorts of manner. Not just from the outside, but also from the inside. Also from attacks like phishing attacks and all that. So there's there's definitely uh, uh, there's going to be a repercussion of a domino effect after this kind of attack or even during this type of incident. So you're looking at... Yeah, or close to a global meltdown, which is not a good sign. And we have to work together to sort of prevent these things in place. Now, um, the executive director of the CNCF, Priyanka Sharma, she emphasized this importance in maintaining sort of integrity in software update systems. And she put something together, which I just pulled off the internet and uh, her sort of comments around this and essentially, you know, the recent incident with CrowdStrike software update serves as a stark reminder of critical importance of secure software supply chains in our increasingly interconnected digital world. Exactly. It's interconnected, people. The difference is, though, this has rendered systems not to be connected, which means it's an even bigger problem because now they can't do things remotely. This requires boots on the ground. Okay. And at the, NC, at, the, at the CNCF, we long advocated for the adoption of robust security practices and tools throughout the entire software lifecycle. Okay, they're blowing a little bit of their own trumpet here, but they're not wrong. They're not wrong. They're right. I've known of the CNCF for years. This event underscores the need for comprehensive end-to-end -end security measures that go beyond traditional approaches. Well, now we know. It's called hindsight analysis. And we still don't know entirely yet because there's a lot of random cases around the world. And uh, this is going to take some time. It might take really close to 30 days, if not more, to try and solve this globally around the world. So this could be really tasking on companies and definitely, definitely costly. It's why we support projects like Intoto. It's just one of the frameworks, eh? And uh, which provides a framework for ensuring the integrity of software supply chain as we move forward. It's imperative that organizations not only implement best practices, but also leverage cutting edge tools and frameworks to prevent such incidences. Yeah, look, you know, looking at just digital, it's fine. And then it says the security of our digital infrastructure is shared responsibility at CNCF and it's committed fostering blah, 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 development sort of technologies. Very nice. Thank you, Priyanka Sharma. But, you know, there is another side to this, and that is every company that's been affected and not affected. The CEOs, directors, managers, all of you that are out there, and I've mentioned this in both my previous videos about these, about CrowdStrike, my last two videos, uh, you have to take also accountability on your side to stop hemorrhaging staff, to stop losing domain knowledge and skills, and to rehire hi your highly trained, well skilled, hardworking IT professionals and security professionals, because this is just a mere software update that's rendered the world to melt basically down. And that's just Microsoft machines, right? It's not necessarily all of them, but it's millions of machines around the world. If you understand that alone, that should indicate to you that you must understand that software as well is inherently full of bugs either way, whichever way you look at it. That includes operating systems. And in no way whatsoever is there 100% security or 100% risk free. So the likelihood and the probability of exploitation and exploits available and even zero day exploits available in tools like CrowdStrike and in operating systems like Microsoft, Linux, Mac, OS is highly probable. In fact, it is almost near guaranteed today. That just tells you alone that you cannot rely on just digital measures. You can't just rely on a robust, a robust, secure mechanisms and components for supply chain security updates and so on, because you've got to rely on your staff. You have to have good security teams. You have to have well-trained IT trained staff. You cannot just outsource your IT to companies. 
it isn't a good idea in the long term because this it's just the beginning this is one of many things that can possibly happen and now you know the repercussions of a simple update can you just imagine the repercussions of major exploits possible which are there already right we just it takes time for hackers to discover these things and of course a little bit of luck so the thing is rehire your staff stop firing people stop letting people go it is a mistake when you outsource because you want to make more profits because you want to have a better bottom line you want to have you know a company succeeding so you can pay your shareholders and that it's a very short-term thinking process and you will not survive this way there will be a time where this will be a tremendously large attack not just a self-inflicted distributed denial of service or something mimicking ransomware there will be cases in the future where there'll be truly large attacks and it's inevitable it's what we all security professionals train for every day right that's why we're in the industry this is why we're here we here as protection mechanisms and safeguards you've got to stop hemorrhaging and company staff because if you're gonna let people go irrespective of the how good they are how bad they are whatever you've got to keep staff because what happens is you're watering down your skills your knowledge your domain capabilities and at some point in time you will be hackable and that will be the doom because it's far more dangerous to reach that stage than it is to get more proactive now it won't cost more money to hire your staff than it is to go and pay all the necessary lawsuits and all and get all your data back and get all your systems in place and pay people extra money to go and fix all these things because this is going to cost millions if not billions as a fix so you can understand that actually the short-term profits only benefit one group of people the shareholders and in all honesty your shareholders will bail on you if they realize that you no longer have any customers because then you're not a viable investment. So that's the thing. People are going to start voting with their wallets. And that includes customers and companies. And well, you're included in that bunch. Whether you decide to continue on with CrowdStrike or not. Which of course it's a great software you should. You should still question and you should request transparency. Definitely neutrality. Definite audits. They need to be audited. There's no doubt CrowdStrike needs to be audited for this. All the procedures need to be checked and rechecked. And as a CEO, George Kurtz, you need to clean house and reevaluate the way you are on social media because there's no need for gaslighting. There are a lot of intelligent people out there that can see through the bullshit. Okay. So my advice is and i do this with companies a lot this is one of the services i provide i'll walk into companies for about two or three weeks and i'll do feasibility studies and figure out if they have the right people in place the right team in place and help them build the right amount of team the right amount of people the skills necessary for having a security team for having an it team so that they can deal with stuff like this and i've been doing that for five years now which is just the skills i've learned in the last 37 years and those companies are at the cutting edge and they are able to recover near close to immediate because of what they've put in place and it's not just digital infrastructure it's boots on the ground it's people people make companies work not software not hardware people and especially in our cases well trained well skilled highly motivated exceptionally hardworking IT professionals and security professionals. So as managers, directors, and CEOs, stop making bad decisions. Do the right thing. Rehire people. Build the economy back up again across the world so that, well, we can deal with situations like this and not have so much inconvenience happening and in potential life-threatening situations like we have today. The fact that we have emergency services rendered unusable, hospitals, medical environments, transportation systems, banking. All I can do is whistle and say, wow, this requires a reevaluation on a global scale. Anyway, thank you everyone once again for watching my view, my videos, and thank you for listening. It's Demetrius here again from Pixel. Thank you to my subscribers. Thank you to anyone who's new in this in the channel. If you're not, if you're new and you want to watch the rest of my videos and you like watching the videos, please subscribe. It just helps the 
YouTube algorithm, just send my videos to new people as well. And it also lets you know when I produce new videos. My aim is to create new videos as often as I can, probably once a day if I can. And I am uh, a person that's been in the industry for 37 years across multiple disciplines, both technology and creative. And my aim is to shed some light on topics and really just in terms of voice, I want to be able to not shut systems down or let companies down. There's no way. I mean, CrowdStrike, yeah, they made a mistake, but they're, in, they're a formidable piece of software. And as a company, they've done a great job with their software. But this is definitely an oversight. And if they have the leadership done right, and if the leaders are doing the right thing, they will take charge. They will have the right leadership. They will put implementations together and they will improve. And that makes them who they are. That will prove who they are. And that's what we hope. That's what we expect as customers, right? We want them to have our back. That's why we're paying for the service. We want them to help us in our security footprint because, well, if they can't help us and they are the cause of our demise, then what's the use of having companies like that? So, CrowdStrike, you got some work to do. IT administrators and IT professionals and security professionals, you have a lot of work to do. I feel for all of you and everyone else. Thank you for watching and signing out.